I'm here to talk to you about how one AI bot isn't enough. You actually need a few of them to be able to do anything in the future. And as you can see, these are my lovely assistants for today. They will ap appear throughout the presentation. So one of the things we've been talking about, and it's been brought up a few times today, is how AI is going to impact the future of work. And this is quite a big deal if you have a job or you want to exist in the world. And there's been lots of different theories over the years about what jobs are going to be most replaceable and what's going to happen. There was a time whenever the leading work was really sure carpenters were going to be replaced by automation, but if you think about how AI is going, it seems more likely that software engineers are going to be replaced at the minute. And new reports come out all the time uh, about what jobs specifically are going to be replaced. And I actually think the most important thing to do is to focus on learning and upskilling and keeping your skills relevant so that you can stay relevant as these things develop. And that's exactly what Taught by Humans does. Who here has heard of ChatGPT? Cool, good, just checking. Uh, who here is using ChatGPT regularly? Quite a lot of you. Okay, so you are in the 2% of the UK workforce who are using ChatGPT or generative AI models regularly. And just a little bit of history on ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is a large language model. That means it, can it was trained on lots of different words. It is something called generative AI, which means that it puts out a, a, a new text, a new image, a new something every, every time. So if I chat to ChatGPT and you chat to it, you're not going to get the same answer, even if we talk to it exactly the same. And this has been kind of a new form of AI in the last couple of years. So ChatGPT was released in November 2022 and got a million users by January 2023. Now that is like a social media site. This is an AI chatbot and it had a million users in two months. So we can see this appetite for using AI in the workforce. And has anyone heard of Claude? Much less people. Has anyone heard of Perplexity? Even less people, okay. So perfect, you're working towards this. So a lot of people use ChatGPT for writing, for creating content, for brainstorming, for lots of different tasks, for help with their code. And one of the things we're getting stuck on is just using ChatGPT or just using one AI. And I actually think what you need to do is start breaking this down into tasks and start thinking about different bots for different jobs. So let's take the example of writing. So instead of just having one AI that magically writes a blog post for us, what I think we should do is think about different AIs. So have one that's a gen an idea generator, one that, that's the researcher, one that actually writes it, and then have an editor. And here's an example of what I would actually do for this. So for your idea generation, chat backwards and forwards with ChatGPT. It works really well for my brain. Some people prefer Claude. That's another chatbot for idea generation. There's then this um, AI called Perplexity, which is really good for research. So once you've got your idea, move into Perplexity, start doing your research there. Then there are some specific writing bots. We actually have our own one that's been trained on all my blogs so that it talks like me, which I'm sure you're like, oh, don't want to read a blog that sounds like this. No, I'm joking. And then finally, I think the most important part of this process is to keep the human at the end. So to have the human editor that comes in, reads through, checks that it hasn't used really hyperbolic language, because if you use ChatGPT, it does use really over-the-top language. It also loves Zeds, because it loves to be American. So make sure you've got your human editor at the end. Uh, and this is just an example. So if, something, if you wanted to do something like making music or something else, start thinking about it as tasks and working out which tasks are better done by AI and which tasks are better done by a human. So you're supplementing the human part of the workforce instead of just handing tasks completely over to an AI. So I've mentioned I run Taught by Humans and we're really focused on education. So we focus on making sure adults have the skills they need for the workforce. So that could be adults who already have a job, who want to upskill, side skill, or reskill, or adults who currently aren't working and potentially data and AI could be good skills for them to learn to get a job. One of the things about education is it's really hard to get right because everybody's an individual. 
For adults particularly, because you don't know what their backgrounds are, you don't know what they already know, intermediate education is much harder than beginner education because where do you start and where do you finish? And also, trying to do anything for a group, so I don't know how many of you are, but I'm hoping you're following because I've tried to make sure everybody follows, but there is probably some of you who are lost or bored or aren't liking what I'm saying. It's really hard to get things right en masse for a group of people. What we kind of work on is personalized learning journeys. We want to get to know you, get to know what you want to know, get to know where you want to go, and then we want to show you the perfect pathway to get you from where you are to where you want to be. And generative AI really helps with this. So one of the promises of generative AI is hyper-personalization, so really getting to know someone and really being able to personalize everything to them. Uh, we've seen personalization before, recommender systems. Has anybody ever bought anything on Amazon? Uh, say you buy a Hoover and then Amazon thinks you're a Hoover collector and starts showing you adverts and adverts for Hoovers. We also have Netflix, which does an all right job recommending shows based on what you've already watched. But personalization comes in waves and it also misses some stuff, so uh, a really random tidbit, but I really don't like the flavor orange or strawberry or dark chocolate. But my favorite yogurt is those Muller Corners that are strawberry yogurt with dark chocolate and orange balls. And you would ne an AI algorithm would never be able to predict that. It's very random, and if I gave it any information, it would miss that. But it is my favorite yogurt in the world, and I would go out of my way to buy it. So personalization sometimes misses the human element of humans, because we are a little bit unpredictable sometimes. So. Last year, I had some time off work and decided I was going to try and build a chatbot that could help people learn data and AI. And I built this really scrappy prototype in less than a week. I just wanted to check out if generative AI could actually help. It barely worked, like it worked, but it just worked. And I took it to demo one day, and it cost $1 per run to run, and I didn't realize why I suddenly had a bill for $100 pounds from $100 from OpenAI because I just let it run all day. It was also really clunky and really slow. I then took six weeks and built another version of the chatbot. And I took four cents to run. Woohoo, that's much better for my bank balance. It actually worked. It was a bit cleaner. It gave better results. But it was one massive chatbot that did everything. So it got to know you. It looked at our content. It personalized it for you. How I got this to work is I have five bots. I, uh, I sit at my computer a lot. I'm a little bit attached to these bots. I, I, I think of them as people. And I'm like, yay, good job. <laughs> you did a really good job today. So Dotly1 is the get to know you bot. It asks five or seven questions to get some information out of you. It then writes a search string, like a Google search string, so it can look up our content, which is the relevant content bot. Then information from both of these is passed to another bot, which we've trained as a learning designer, so it's very specific. Its job is just to design a curriculum for this individual. We then also have an assessment bot whose job is to write an assessment that works really well for this individual. And then we have one more bot that maps it back to our skills. And this works really well. They have specific jobs, they get specific data, and they output specific things. And just to talk about how you can get multi-bots to work for you. So we've just talked about architecture. That's how all the pieces fit together, so how you break down the problem. You also need some tech expertise, but as things move on, there's lots of no code and drag and drop tools, so you actually don't even need to be able to code to get these done. Being able to think about the UX, like how it looks and how people are going to use it, is really important. The bit that everyone forgets is the human part. So I spoke to 200 people before I even started building this bot, so I knew what people wanted and what people needed. Uh, with generative AI, as the output is completely unpredictable, you need to put it in front of as many people as possible. I didn't realize how much people were going to talk to the chatbot. That's why it cost me so much money. I was just saying three words to it every time I spoke. People were writing paragraphs about their lives. And finally, one of the most important things is subject matter expertise. So we have hundreds of bits of content on AI and data that we were able to feed into our platform, and that was why it works so well. But you yourself can definitely build your own multi-bot approach if you follow these steps. Thanks.